no offense, Islanders fans. Let's leave this for a second. I, first off, I want to say that fucking barn looks just like so oh. much fun. Yeah, the Coliseum's a cool place. So what? And there, and by the way, there, there. That's the we will not get to see a game there as badly as I wanted to go. Um, it's mm-hmm. this is it, but their new stadium looks incredible too. Um, the Islander fans that were there are just ballistic and amazing oh. and good for them. What I really want to talk about with this series though, because we'll have plenty of time to talk about the Islanders as the second round starts. If you're Pittsburgh, where do you go from here? What do you do? Malkin's up. By the way, three straight first round exits. You'd never know. You'd think the Leafs were the only team in the league. <laughs> well, that? at least, yeah, but Pittsburgh's won a cup. Well, Hold you well. fire Mike Sullivan, if you're Brian Burke, and you bring in your own guy, and then you go and you go and you get a you goaltender, get and you uh, <laughs> you make Tristan Jari your backup, or you move him to somewhere else, and then you go get a goaltender, and all of a sudden, your team is good again. Is Casey DeSmith... He's just not. He's just a. He's just a guy, right? He's twenty nine. I don't, even I know don't think you go into next season with Casey DeSmith as your starting goaltender. Man, because so here's the thing: Tristan Jari's making Miko Koskinen money. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. Three, three and a half. There will be takers. DeSmith's NHL numbers are fine. It's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it was with Jari. That dude was in the All Star game last year. That dude was in the All-Star game. All right, Malkin's ah. got another year. My bad, I forgot he's making. And by the way, Evgeny Malkin, highest paid Pittsburgh Penguin. Mm-hmm. Um, 8.7 you know, for 87. So here you go. You've got Your lineup is set for next year. Red commercials. The only person that is uh, really a UFA is A, Cody Ceci, uh, and B, uh, uh, Colton Scrivoir. Scrivoir. Sevier. Sevier. <laughs> I've honestly never heard that name. I've never fucking heard that Oh, wait. Adam, I've watched Penn's Adam. games this year. I don't know that name. Jeff Sevier. <laughs> Is it Jeff? No, Jeff it's Colton. <laughs> Colton. <laughs> I had to check. You, <laughs> you said to assholes. Colton <laughs> Sevier. Uh, this is like the eighth time I've brought up NHL today. But Colton Sevier is a good pickup in NHL three years ago because he had a high potential rating. So if oh. you traded for him when he was young and you held on to him for like two years, he'd be like an 84 on your third line. Okay, awesome. can I just say that's a failure of the NHL franchise because he's not young. I covered him in He's junior. 32. Yeah, but yeah, he had a good do. potential what? rating. <laughs> Why would he have a high potential rating at 39? Would go up, it, he was like, I don't know, uh, 79 in the game. And then he'd go up like a couple points every year because he had a little good potential. And he'd end up like an 83. And he got an 83 overall in your third line. It was nice. Um, anyway, that's my be a GM corner. I, I got to say, yeah, we should have we should have an all uh, like a top 10 when the season's over, because I love doing our top fives and our top fe- tens. Uh, a top 10 players who weren't actually good but had high potential so you, so you should have drafted them segment. that's fun um <laughs> i think we need i think we need to do that uh yeah. we're gonna have to do this summer we'll do a lot of top fives and top tens and have some fun with that because i think that was a really fun segment when we did it on the goalies now if you look at the at the penguins their lineup is kind of set for next year malkin crosby gensel zucker tanev rust Kapanen, and mccann and carter all will be back and that's the majority of the money. Yeah, and Minnesota has their first round pick, so they don't have even that coming in. That's why you fire your head coach and, and get then you go. Marcus Pedersen, Brian Dumoulin, Mike Matheson, and Chris Letang will all be back. You would think Cody Cece would be back because he found a, a, a system he's happy in. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, what do you do? And oh, by the way, uh, uh, oh yeah, never mind, never mind. What? There's they, they had what? Buke, they had Bukestad on the dead cap, but he's up, I believe, on cap friendly. I don't know. I mean, I mean brand gone. new he's GM, gone, as in he's traded. Brand new GM, brand new president. Um, you know, I remember the 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 thirty one thoughts that Burke did with Frege and Merrick after signing in Pittsburgh, and he preached patience. That was months ago. Now they're about to head into not just an off season, but an expansion draft off season. Expansion draft off seasons are fun because it's guaranteed change. Mm. You cannot stand pat. You can't just be like, ah, we're going to do nothing because some monster is going to come in and create a giant hole in your team. No matter what, no matter what, there's no running for it. They get to take one player from all of you, every single team. So, and 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 Calgary Flames fans, Toronto Maple Leafs fans, 
Anaheim Ducks fans, Vancouver Canucks fans, ex Hartford Whalers fans, does Brian Burke ever just sit on his hands and do nothing? <laughs> Never. Ron Hextall, neither. Like, but you got to remember, Brian Burke is not making the day to day decisions with this team. Right. I think that's mm. very important. He is an overseer. Mm. He, is, he lacks a tie and he lacks day to day decision making. Isn't Adam, it funny that Hockey Night in Canada can make him wear a tie, but the Penguins can't? Anyway, <laughs> I find it, I just, I, I, I think that any, anywhere there where Brian Burke is, and you think Brian Burke's going to take a back seat and not play a gigantic hand in the, I'm sure Ron Hextall and Brian Burke have already argued like 40 times. Like knock down, drag him out, yelling matches. I'm you sure. Can, you can tell Brad Treliving to go shit in his hat. You 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 got to throw hands with Ron Hextall. You try to tell him that. You you got to it's it's got to be I want to I want to see that barn fight. <laughs> Kevin Lowe, move over. I'm not interested. I want to see oh, Brian Burke is training. He's going all YouTube star about it. He's got Felix Potvin in his uh, in his corner, trying to train him, show him how to beat him in a fight. I just listen. Anyway, Ron Hextall is making the decisions there. <laughs> that went off. The Sorry, road. that was a fantasy in my head. <laughs> Ron Hextall is making the decisions there. Uh, he'll have Brian Burke as like a sparring partner. He'll have him as like a guy to bounce ideas off of. But Ron Hextall is making the decisions with the Pittsburgh Penguins. But like I said, expansion draft summer, you got you have to do stuff. You got to do stuff. <laughs> you have to do something. And you can't um, bring back Tristan Jari. Oh, boy. Now, if you look at Berkey's tenure in Toronto, and then you look at Berkey's tenure in Calgary, goaltending. Well, I mean, the solution was, all right, let's see if Jiggy can do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and oh, we and we mistakenly have this guy Reimer in the system too. They mistakenly. mistakenly. <laughs> well, no, no, I didn't mean I, that as an insult. I mean that as like, a, oh, thank God, because we weren't going to do anything uh, about this. The Leafs <laughs> really did seem to stumble into their own guy, didn't they? They did. They really, really did on that one. Oh, um, what about him? Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, okay. So Jari played just one game last year. I was trying to find a trend in his playoff performances, but he played one game and it was fine. But boy, eight, eight, eight save percentage through six yeah. games. That's Holy not, that's not an NHL goalie. It, and negative 6.3 goal saved above average. That's according to hockey reference.com. I think, I don't remember which site's model it was, but they, they had it even worse. Basically the suggestion is that any other goalie, <laughs> almost any other goalie in the NHL would have had better results against the Islanders. And that was a situation where the eye test and your giant blood, your dang it, if you will, uh, lined up with the Corsi numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also want to say just quickly, we won't get into uh, previewing these series uh, this episode. We'll get into it next, but the NHL can't take a breath. So the, the Leafs and Canadians will play at the same time as the Islanders Bruins second round starting Saturday. Can't wait a couple days. We got to get it out by July 15th. Oh, Jesus, gosh. guys. It's like you, you can't award the cup in the next seven weeks. Really? Anyway. Um, I don't understand why we had to wait for the, for the Canucks and Flames. I, I, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. You could have just started the Canadian first round. You could have done it. I don't understand. But I guess I they didn't want to kill the ratings, which were already terrible. Uh, Who so- was casually dropping into those games? It would have been Flames fans and Canucks fans. Who in Toronto was like, oh, I got to check this out? Who in Toronto would have checked it out anyway? What if- Even if it mattered. I like, don't. Even I if don't. it was like a normal regular season game and neither team was out. Yeah, it's just like Flames fans probably are not dropping into Leaf, te- Leaf games unless they're playing the Leafs or there's some sort of big playoff game happening. You're right. You're absolutely right, Steve. It's a stupid thing. Okay. And, they it, and they're dumb. I, I would love to hear from any fan who is not A, paid to watch hockey, mm-hmm. B, a Canucks fan, or B, a Flames fan. Did you watch either of those games? And if so, why? <laughs> why? It, it screwed up the entire playoff schedule for two teams who aren't even in it. Mm-hmm. And now the Leafs and Habs are obligated to go seven to fuck it up as much as possible. Yep. I hate it. Yep. <laughs> I hate it here. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. it's terrible. Yep. It's terrible. Um, it's terrible. So go we Boston. Got, 
Islanders, Boston, I think, okay, so maybe this series turns into the series that I thought Capitals Boston was going to be. Yep, I think Unstoppable right. force, immovable object. What happens? Ooh. Well, Tuka Rask is a goalie. Yeah, he sure is, boy. Wow. He, he's a goalie. Um, I mean, the, the Capitals were just too easy for the Bruins to get through. And I have a hard time believing the Islanders will be that. Maybe we have uh, overestimated how much of a um, metapod the Islanders are. (laughs) They're maybe not quite as unbeatable on defense as we thought, but they're much better offensively than we thought as well. I mean, we're about to find out. Listen, Tristan Jari might actually get some sympathy after the series, or he's going to look worse. Mm Mm-hmm. It's up to the Bruins. It's a like what happens if the Bruins just mop these dudes? <laughs> it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna look good on the pens. It's it's like Jari's evaluation continues throughout the second round, even though he's not in it. And okay. Can I tell you something low-key bothering me? What? Taylor Hall mm-hmm. in his little tour, uh talking about hey. I would have accepted to trade to other teams. No problem. His little, his little, you could have had this tour. I tell you what. No, you, better... you couldn't have. That Listen, wasn't, that wasn't what was coming out of his camp at the time. It's nice to be able to say that now, but I don't believe that. Not but true. he's saying it not now. True. And I think he's feeling himself and I don't blame him for feeling himself because he has been the bag as opposed to the boxer for several years now, since winning the heart trophy, uh, I'd be feeling myself too, but I tell you what, the Bruins better make it to at least the third round 